Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to use a hand mic because I'm coughing, so if I start to scream or anything, just say something and I'll try to keep it far away. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about modular and bulletproof user interfaces. Uh, my name is Lucian. First, several bits about me. Uh, I'm a designer. Uh, I call myself a front-end designer as well because uh, I really love to execute my designs in HTML and CSS. It gives me additional, I could say, opportunities to improve it. I'm also an ABBA fan, but don't worry, I won't do like the Dancing Queen on stage. Yeah, I'm not that good. And uh, I'm a casual gamer. I work with Emmanuel, who is my brother. We have a small uh, design studio uh, where we work mostly design and consulting. First, a question. Uh, if you could, by the show of hands, tell me if you play video games. Wow, that's great. Do you remember this company? Great. Uh, as for, for those of you who are not aware, this is a LucasArts uh, company, a game design company, and this is their older logo, which, which they used during the, the golden era of designing adventure games like this one. And I checked uh, today, and this game is like 24 years old, which is quite weird because I don't feel that old. Uh, this is actually the game I, uh, I started uh, with, with my, I could say, gamer career. And this is the, one of the first games I played on the computer. And what was interesting is that I didn't really understand much English, but as you can see, this game pretty much uh, you need, to, you need to know what you're talk, uh, how to understand and use the interface in case to progress through the gameplay. But you could say that the interfaces were easy to use uh, after you learned a simple recipe. And how did this game actually work? Uh, the, bottom, uh, the top part of the screen was uh, your, your gameplay area where you, you would see your character, you would uh, walk around, talk to other NPCs, and the bottom part was your game interface. Uh, it was divided into, into parts. The left one, uh, a list of verbs and actions which you would combine with the item inventory on, on your right. And it was quite easy. You could say most of the adventure games were logical, but Monkey Island wasn't actually logical. You had to use your imagination and combine really different and weird things to actually progress through the game. But it was awesome. And it actually got me into thinking about interfaces and how we use them. Uh, what I really liked is that you could finish the game by solving puzzles. And everything you had on yourself was important for the actual gameplay. You couldn't solve a puzzle until, until you uh, do the necessary set of steps. Uh, and in parallel, we could say that designing websites is also like, like a puzzle. Uh, we have a goal we want to achieve. We have different components, different styles, and we combine those uh, to create a better experience or, or to maybe sell more products or do something. In the next example, uh, you see a board with seven buttons. And we, we, these are all buttons, and we can say that you interact with same and with, with them uh, on the same way. You push them and something happens. But those buttons are different. The seven buttons look visually the same, but they have different colors. For example, the start button is green, and green is the affirmative color we usually associate with positive action, while stop and the red color we usually associate with warning or dangerous action. One of the interesting things is that the, if you start to uh, feel the board, Physically, you can see that the start button has a ring to it. You can actually feel that this button is different from the others. Uh, as for the big red button, it's also different from the others, but it's also a button. And why is it different? Because it's really important that if there is a need for emergency, a stop action or something, that you can, you can find it easily. You can press it with your hand. And although these are all buttons, and they function the same, their visual appearance 
is different, and this helps us in distinguishing between the actions. And when you are building an interface, you have to find the right combination, because if you had seven buttons that all look the same, how would you know which one is the most important in case of an emergency? Uh, but let's talk a little about history, since we started with, with older games. How did we build pages and interfaces back in the days? Well, you would produce a JPEG, a, a design in Photoshop or some other program. You would show it to the client. Someone would slice it and probably implement it into a PHP framework or, or a CMS, possibly custom. And that was it. And if you were really old, you would put this at the bottom of your page to, to let, let your users know this, that you only tested this page and made it work within the Explorer 6, because why the hell not? This is actually a bad practice, so don't copy this. And this was actually a problem, a really big problem, but we learned a lot from them. And nowadays we are actually, well, I'm hoping we are smarter when, when we build things. And one of the interesting things is since you had a page that was active and functional and live, if the client asked you to, that, to add another page, you would just duplicate the, the last one that worked, that was the most similar. You would probably inline some CSS, change the HTML, and forget all about it until your root folder on the server had like 100 different templates, which are all similar but not the same. Thankfully, today, our landscape is different. We, are, we have a lot of different devices, use cases, screens we have to test with. We, we are building interfaces that need to scale from phones to tablets, which are primarily touch devices, to laptops, desktops, or TVs, which you can maybe uh, control uh, via a remote with several buttons or voice. And our projects need to actually evolve with us as well, uh, because if we want them to work on all the devices and the devices that are not yet invented or that will, that will become popular in a year or two, we have to think ahead. And that's because our interfaces need to be flexible. They need to adapt even though we are not sure what they should adapt to, but we need to make them bulletproof in that case. And one of the things, when, when we start to think about interfaces, we need to see, we need to t actually see and become aware of the different interfaces our page is built from. And a lot of these front-end frameworks actually helped us develop, a, a, I would say, appreciation for design systems in the last several years. Uh, you may use or you may not use these uh, frameworks like Bootstrap or Foundation or UIKit or whatever one you like, but it's a fact that, for example, Bootstrap, uh, with, it, with, with its pre-designed set of components and styles, actually helped developers and made it easier for them to build systems, because Bootstrap is a design system. It, it gives you all the needed components to actually build a page, to build an interface, a web app. And this is also not that much of a technical talk, so I wouldn't go into BAM naming methodology or modular and scalable architecture. You can read about those online. But you have to find a way so that you can build, build every, and deliver every, everything you do in a, in a responsive way, in a, in a commented way, in, in a way where it will be easy, easy to man, maintain and build new components. Because like I said, we are not only building websites. We are not only building designs. We are building design systems and systems need to be uh, able to reproduce and, and create another set of pages from, from those already designed components. And one of the probably easiest things to do if you are redesigning a website or, or building a page from scratch uh, is to, to see all the, all the different elements, in this case buttons, a page is using. And you can see and learn a lot from this because you are placing all the important elements on one page and one screenshot, and you can compare them. <coughs> you can see if, if the, if the uh, button styles are maybe uh, 
not that not that uh, uh, important if they are confusing if if, if the difference between them is like too small, and then you can optimize. Uh, when I'm doing interfaces audit, it's usually when I start to work on a, on a new project. I just open a spreadsheet file and I write down all the components I can see or think about that I'm going to use or am I going to need in building this website. And this can be like header, footer, which are the regular ones, but also different types of navigation, uh, some base components for typography or, or tables, different buttons, if it's a web shop product listing or product items, and things like that. And when, when you start to think in terms of components, you can build a style guide and a pattern library. And why is that important? Pattern libraries and style guides are like a central repository of your design system. So when you want to work and build another page, a sub page or a different use case, for example, you just go to that page and find and see all the elements that are already developed, already tested, and you can just easily copy them. For example, this is one of the style guides uh, uh, we did for one of our clients. It's actually open source. You can even uh, see it online. This is basically a page that contains all the different UIs we, we used on the page, from tabs, accordions, uh, different navigation types, tables, and things like that. Forms are especially important because you have a lot of different uh, view types, for example, you might have labels on top, on the left, and it's important to showcase this uh, to the developers and, and to see how you can best combine those in creating something better. And if you work uh, and think about components, you can actually uh, ma make it easier for yourself, because if you created like a spreadsheet document, then you can do things like this. Uh, help the front-end developer create all the, all the needed files uh, for your components. And it's easier to communicate because, because not only you're doing something in spreadsheet and then you're helping the, the next person in the, in the, in the line uh, to do their job easier. And one, one of the things I really like when we are designing in this way is that it's easier to get design critique on specific components. Uh, I had a chance uh, actually ex experience when, when I sent a design to the client and he said, no, I, I don't like it, but what's the problem? And he couldn't explain it. But when I show him a, a style guide, a pattern library, he can see the specific components, he can comment on those. And if they are okay, then when we start to build pages from these components, it's easier. And with all the patterns in place, you can build web pages. Uh, you, you should find some sort of templating engine that allows you to maybe pass dynamic data so that you can do quick prototypes. There are a lot of those available. I used to do it with PHP. I just included, passed some variables, and I could have a, a small and scalable templating engine where I could create all other web pages. But we started with video games, so let's talk a little more about them about Monkey Island. When I started to think and, and prepare for the presentation, I talked about how I could convey uh, the way in which modern websites are built, modern projects. And we could say that it's built similar. You, you have an interface and you combine different elements. For example, if you're using wireframing tools like Balsamic, you have a set of components, you place them you, sh you show it to the client, you discuss it, and further. And I wonder, what if we designed websites the way we played games? For example, if LucasArts developed a wireframing tool or some quick prototyping tool in the 90s, it might look like this. We could combine all the different elements we al already built and place in our pattern library. We can create a web page easily with this. For example, if you are building a web shop, and you want to do the checkout page, there are different approaches. One which might work for you, others which might not. So 
For example, you have like four or five steps in that process. You might use tabs, but tabs might not work. In that case, you can switch easily and maybe use accordions or, I don't know, a list of subpages. And by building a modular uh, UI library, you could actually build those pages pretty quickly and test them. So this is one of the fun ideas I had. Maybe, maybe someone can help me build it. And when we build web pages, it's only a matter of finding the correct principle, uh, sorry, uh, recipe. You have to find the formula, what works best for your page. But in order to achieve that, you need to have something that enables you, that empowers you, and not st stands in your way. And when we talk about design systems, it's often a question, how should we proceed? How should we start? How do we actually reinforce this way of thinking in our projects? Depending on where you work, uh, are you working as a freelancer alone or, or uh, in a team with different people? Uh, there isn't actually one person who should be responsible. Everyone should be responsible. Because if a designer doesn't think about delivering uh, things as components, uh, making a, a solid visual framework, then you will make it harder for the front-end developer to do CES variables or, or create different, different modules he can reuse. So there is one thought that I would definitely like to uh, leave you with, and that is that if you really want to build great interfaces, it requires team effort. Uh, it helps you personally because it makes the team more compact, they work together, and they deliver something that the client will actually want to appreciate. Thank you. We have a lot of time for questions, so if there's any, any designers here, someone in the back? He's got the other mobile mic, so I'm gonna have to do a lot of running. Hi, uh, great talk. Uh, what do you think about uh, using uh, such design systems, uh, whether they uh, restrict you in your creative freedom to build something that's new and innovative or something that breaks the mold? Okay, uh, thanks for the question. Well, they certainly restrict you, but it really depends on a number of factors. Perhaps if, if your budget is smaller, if you don't have time, then you might use a design system like Bootstrap to build your interface. And this will be okay, but you, you, you are really using something uh, that someone else created. And it doesn't mean it's perfect for you, for your brand. But it gives, I would say, a nice overview, uh, a helpful tool set for actually building something. So I would really say that it depends. If I'm working alone, that I would probably choose something of a custom approach because it lets me, I can be faster when I develop something and test it. But if I'm working with a team, then I would have to, of course, see what works best in this team. Hope I answered your question. Any other questions? I have a question. Um, so we saw your, your style guide. Uh, do you actually show that to customers beforehand? And I think the answer was yes. And then the secondly, do you go and then uh, skip wireframing and go right to, to page design using those elements of style, or do you actually do wireframing too? Uh, I actually do wireframes, but they're mostly on uh, paper, so I can do it quite fast. Uh, but when we start to uh, work on the visual guidelines and visual assets, uh, as well as functional components, we try to show to our clients uh, the style guide as soon as possible because there, there, there's a time when you, you, have, you are working at something that's more complex, for example, a, a home page or a landing page, and the client expects to see everything and everything should be perfect, but you don't really have time to do everything. And by showing them bits, they can see how you are progressing. And, and you feel better because, I don't know, at the end of the day, I created an awesome component for tabs or something, and the client can see that. So I think it helps if you show them as soon as possible. 
Great. Oh, there's another question back here. Uh, I was wondering um, if you have a style guide, then um, would it be a good idea to test uh, visual regression on a, on a style guide? Because on a style guide you see everything, um, everything at once, a model opened and everything. Would it be a good idea to run your test on the style guide? Yeah, well, uh, a good thing is that, that style guide is basically uh, one file with included all the components. You could maybe opti you can maybe even uh, do like several sub pages that are uh, thematic, like Bootstrap has. It really depends on the complexity. But since that component is included on every other page and the content is changed dynamically, I always use the same code and I can test everything on the style guide. I don't have to click through all the pages. So the answer is. Yes, you can test everything on a style guide if you, if you do it like that. 